Hey everybody, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And good news, Rainbow Bright number two is out. We're gonna take a look at it. We've read it. Um, we have thoughts about it. Didn't take long. Well, actually, it took longer than it should have, but that's another story. <laughs> if your children love, now this is a comic for kids. If your children love giant gobs, walls of uh, exposition and text, and uh, comics uh, where Rainbow Bright uh, only shows up in the very last page, yeah. they're gonna love Rainbow Bright number two. This is halfway through the series. I think this is halfway through the is it series. Four? I think it's four. Issues. Maybe it's six. I'm not oh, sure. Oh no! But this is okay. So either we're half or a third of the way <sighs> in, and she just now, just now, like doing Rainbow Bright. Yeah, now, um, we did review the first issue, and disclaimer, we normally don't review comic books because we make comic books, uh, but in this case, we made an exception because it is a 1980s property. And because I loved it as a kid. I had Rainbow Bright dolls, and I love it. Yes, uh, so this sort of falls into the, uh, the She-Ra category, where it was something that Geeky was fond of. They're trying to reboot it. Now, this is a comic book, not an animated series, so it technically is, is apocrypha. It's not, you know, actually canon, but... It's, it's pretty meh. Yeah. I don't even know if is. meh. I don't even know. If I was having trouble well. reading it. Like my eyes were going cross trying to read all the text because it got to the place where it was just so wordy and so close together that I'm like, I I can't even stay focused on this to read it. I was trying really hard and I'm like, I can't stay focused on this. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Um, now, you know, we said before that uh, you know in the first issue it seemed like they were basically saying this up for a trade for a graphic novel uh, because it's very very slow. Rainbow Bright did not appear at all in the first issue. Oh, I'm sure it's going to have to be a trade. Because yeah. It's second and the second issue and she just now shows up. Very very last page. Uh, kind of. Kind of. We kind of see Rainbow Bright in a very now for a monthly comic that's that's usually not good to not have the uh, hero uh, show up until the very end, especially when you've got the hero. Um, on the front page, but the the comic is uh, written by Jeremy Whitley, who did uh, Princeless, and Brittany Williams, who's worked on uh, a bunch of different stuff. I, it doesn't, I think Hellcat. I think she worked on Hellcat. Oh, I'm not no. sure. Um, it is from Dynamite. It's three ninety nine. Uh, we're gonna look That's at the, the, this. Is it four bucks? Four bucks for about for this. I think it was about ten minutes, maybe, to read it, maybe. Yeah, that's floppy comics. Geeky's like, oh my god, why the comics? No, I know, so but it's just like it's ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a, a wait for the trade, but um, we'll show you a couple issues here and we'll talk now. Uh, where we left off, Wisp was fighting shadow creatures in the suburbs because everybody wants you know Rainbow Bright to fight shadow creatures in the suburbs. Yes, and it makes total sense that a, that a child would just leave her house and fight a you know someone just, you know by yep. herself. Follow and she followed uh, Twinkle, not Twink, but now Twink. It's complicated. Uh, who will not shut up? Um, it's the talkiest damn character in the whole damn yes, comic. He's very verbose, and he even uses the word verbose. Yeah, and this is supposed to be a comic for kids. Uh, not that kids are, are incapable of reading uh, heavy dialogue, but you, you, you'll see some of these pages I've seen are this, these extremes. You have these shows that are supposed to be quote unquote for kids, and either either make it really stupid and you know piety and dumb, or they turn around the other way and they're overly wordy and and it's like they're meet in the middle. I mean, God, so many people have to have kids. For pity's sakes. Uh, yeah, so this is what we're talking about. <laughs> this is a typical page of, of Rainbow Bright. Now, they were um, all as bad as this. A yeah, lot of them a were, lot were, like, very... This is actually, especially for a kid's comic, I mean, usually you have to kind of decompress the text a little bit. The text, I think, I think is the way they, the one, the font they use, it kind of blurs together when you're trying to read yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read. Um, but, uh, yeah, so basically this whole issue is one, like, giant exposition dump um, by Twinkle explaining uh rainbow bright and and now here's here's where it's where it's uh oh i was gonna read the one first part first okay. it's like you know talk about the color leaving the world and and with no color we'll, with the, wait, wait with the color will go all the joy all the fun all the diversity that makes your world so great yeah and they, they made sure that the diversity is bold Yes. Uh, all well, the stuff with joy and fun because you know joy, fun, and diversity and then, are are going to go away. How do you fight shadows with white light? Of course. <laughs> yes. Okay. Can we talk? Well, that's about... scientifically accurate. Yes, but... I know it's scientifically accurate. But okay, so Rainbow Bright in this this uh, comic, which is uh, focused on diversity, um, she's the only one who can handle the the white light, and the white light is like the the leader of the uh, the color kids. Or the color yeah, gang, or whatever yeah, they're gonna they, call them in this them, one. They called them color guard. Uh, you're telling me this rainbow bright can use all the colors of light? Yes. 
um, using their... Now, they make sure they don't assume Rainbow Bright's gender. They always refer oh, yes. to Rainbow Bright this. as their... Uh, because, you know, Twinkle... Twinkle is, is very woke. Uh, Twinkle will not refer to Rainbow Bright as she. Now, like She-Ra, okay? She is one of many Rainbow Brights. Because no one's special. No one's special. I mean, they're special, but they're among special. They're, yeah, they're everybody's special. So this Rainbow Bright, uh, this version of Rainbow Bright is is the latest of many, many Rainbow Brights. Exactly what they did with She-Ra, where She-Ra is not special, really. She just happens to be the latest in a long No, what they're going to use it is they're going to use it to argue that, oh, if you don't like this, well, it's because it's not the same one for me. This is a different, this is a different one. The except for shield. She-Ra, they try to use that, except it's, that's a thousand years in the in the future where the girl named She-Ra and her name's Adora and everybody has the exact same names. But it's not the same thing. Yeah, but right. it is the same thing. <laughs> but it's not the same thing. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so we're seeing a pattern here and I don't understand the thought process behind this. Again, this is you know, She-Ra and Rainbow Bright using the same uh, kind of thing where it's a mantle and not not that character specifically. And I think part of that is, I wonder if the thought process is, well, if we ever want to bring in a different She-Ra, a different character, it's not like, you know, Spider-Man where it's a mantle or whatever. So like they season could... three where she's a different, uh, she's it's a he and it's a different yeah. race? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like if we want to make Bo She-Ra, we can do that because it's a mantle and not, right. you know, if we want to make, uh, you know... So I have no problem with Shira being a different race. I do have a problem with if Shira was a, a dude. Yeah, so, I mean, I could see them being like, because they had the kid Brian from the cartoon show, the boy be like, oh, here's this kid Brian, and he's going to be the new Rainbow Bright now. And I'm like, oh, come on. Well, that's what they're going for, especially with this, because they keep referring to them as them. And they, they. they and them, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so, again, the wall of text. <laughs> this is supposed to be a kid's comic. But you comic. can't show the pages, so don't uh, Well, show. I'm not showing all the pages. I wanted to show... Um, something is, is kind of irritating. Uh, well, it's not kind of irritating. It's like, why are you doing this? Um, we're going to show uh, Lurky and Murky are in the comic, right? Um, except they don't really look a whole lot like uh, Lurky and Murky. Let's go back. Um, remember Lurky and Murky? Or Murky and Lurky? Or Lurky and Murky, whichever way you want to go. Uh, they were kind of the bumbling bad guys from the original Rainbow Bright. They are in this one. Um, they are in this one, except, uh, this is Murky, and he looks like a Nazi with a jetpack. Pretty much. He's got, he's got Hordak hair. He's got Hordak's, uh, you know, hairdo. Um, he's, he's probably like six feet tall. Uh, he's got a monocle, like a cyborg monocle. And, um, now they still got, you know, the, their little buggy, the, um, Dismobile, um, you know, but uh, yeah, I oh, don't. Here's what we learned about his his name's actually Twink now. Yeah, they call him Twink. They do call him. I will give them props for that. They actually shorten Twinkle's name to uh, uh, Twink, but he's still insufferable. Um, I hate he's him. Really obnoxious. Uh, I can't stand him. I don't like this thing they're doing with. The, I don't like how they're doing this. Look with at this. The, it's like blah 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 blah. blah, 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 blah. And most of I would say 75% of the dialogue in this book is just Twink, and he won't shut up. Um, so we do get, uh, we do get, uh, Lurky in this one too. You actually, I, I, I'm not showing that much. Yeah, you are. But anyway, go ahead. And he looks, um, I think he looks like Gritty. Personally, uh, <laughs> well, I think, I think he kind of looks like Gritty because he's got the shirt and everything. He's, he's. They did keep his, like the way he vocalizes. They kept that. Yeah. He actually is probably the, the most, sneakers. he is actually the most like himself. He looks like a giant meatball. No, he doesn't look like a meatball. He's got a shirt on this time though. And he doesn't have, he doesn't have the big uh, proboscis uh, that he had before, but he looks, he looks like you said, for, he looks like kind of a rejected Sesame street. He does. Uh, character. And um, yeah, I mean, basically we go through the 22 page comic and we don't get, uh, we don't get the Rainbow Bright until the. Uh, I'm so, gonna show. I didn't show a whole while. I only showed like three pages. Here we go. So we've got Magical Girl transformation. Of course, we have to have starting with the feet up, moving up to the arms. Oh look, wink with the star appearing Sailor on the face. Moon. Sailor Moon. And uh, yeah, so we get Rainbow Bright. Well, that was weird. Yeah, it's weird that there's a Rainbow Bright comic and Rainbow Bright isn't in it until the very last page of the second issue. Yeah, I still think that was a bad um, decision. I think that's a very bad decision. Again, I think they're doing this because they're going to, uh, they're going to probably shoot for the trade paperback. Yeah, I'm guessing. But um, 
Yeah, if I were a kid, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be bored. I'd be I disappointed. Think, I don't think this is for kids. I think this is no. for, uh, it's more for like the people I think are going to read it because they're adults or because they're the, the people that, that follow their kind of books. I, I, I don't know. It nicely. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of anything eighties and I can't, I mean, I feel kind of the same. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I just like, this isn't, this is. Well, now that she's Rainbow Bright, I'll, I'll see what happens because. Yeah, we'll keep up to reading this point, it, but. I, I, I've been like, no, this is beyond the, the, the whole, she's in Turn Rainbow Bright at the end of this issue. It's so flippin' wordy. It's like, oh my it's God. It's very wordy. Okay. Um, I thought you were supposed to show more than tell, but anyway, um, so we got Turn Rainbow Bright and now we'll see if it gets better. Yeah, I mean, if it gets more Rainbow Bright-esque, uh, I'll, I'll give it a pass, but the, they gotta cut down the dialogue. I really God, can't stand like, Twink. I can't stand Twink either. I mean, he's just, he's, he's annoying. Just a, he's just annoying as hell. But, I mean, now that they got to this point, we'll see. We'll see where it goes from the here. Um, I'm not gonna get too mean on it yet until I see more. You're not gonna it's get just, too mean. It's just, it's just, we spent eight bucks already, and this is all- We've spent eight dollars, and we've had, uh, like, one and a half pages of Rainbow Bright for eight bucks. One and a half pages of Rainbow Bright for eight. I think I deserve a doll from Hallmark or something. I know, right? Like for eight dollars, we could have actually bought a Rainbow no, Bright doll. I want to get one of the ones from Hallmark so I can hug it. How much are the ones at, at Hallmark? I would have rather spend eight bucks on that. Probably eight bucks. We'll go look and see how much they are, because I would have rather I would have rather spent that on that than this. And then I can make my own stories and I can make my own thoughts about <laughs> Rainbow Bright. Look, you can get Murky and Lurky for twenty bucks. Everything's on sale. Wait, oh. On sale? Go the biddies here we're gonna do here we're gonna look for rainbow bright at hallmark i know we're taking a detour guys but like I we really... went we went to look at the rainbow bright see look you can buy the complete okay okay oh god it's okay no okay you want to know what but okay eight dollars for two issues of rainbow bright uh which is barely rainbow bright or you can buy a dvd of the entire series for seven dollars okay, and go. 96 cents the, the dvd but I kind of want the Rainbow Bright doll. Oh no, I want Puppy Bright. Look, for a little bit more than what I spent, I could have bought Puppy Bright. <gasps> oh, this Bright too cute too. So if you're asking me if you're getting if you're getting your your bang for your buck, if you're uh, an '80s fan, look, five fifty six, you Those can get a bitty. Ones, I know, but well, they had a giant one in our Hallmark. I wanted it so much. The wit and wisdom it. of Rainbow Bright is is as much as we spent on two digital comics. How many pages is that? It is. Um, I don't know. We're gonna see. Uh, more pages than more pages than the comic books. It's hard to make a case uh, for this to, for buying this right now. Maybe show more details. See if there's give you the pages on where, page where number. Say show more so, where oh, there show where it says detail. show more details. 124 pages. 124 pages for the wit and wisdom of Rainbow Bright, um, the original Rainbow Bright, for seven dollars and ninety six cents. Uh, they have a sale, or you can go buy two digital Rainbow Bright comics. Um, for eight bucks and and feel like you you just it didn't it wasn't worth eight dollars yeah honestly so, i mean yeah this I, is why this is part of why comics are like their tr comic books are trying to get old school fans but this is not the way you get old school fans you don't bring old school fans into it and and make a comic that that doesn't resemble what they remember and then charge what you charge for it. Yeah. You know, they're just that, not and gonna that, buy. And, and that, but what else? What else do you get with your with your money? You get insults. You get insults. Um, and told you are the wrong kind of people for whatever reason. And uh, now this one they haven't done it with this, but like with Shira, they then they, they should all over the original. And yeah. Tell you that you're a bad person too. So. Yeah, I mean this. I mean we'll we'll, we'll give it a chance. Um, again, yeah, like I think I said, this is it might get better now that she's actually Rainbow Bright. Right. Right. Um, but I don't know. But again, it's, it's, you know, this obviously was designed to be a graphic novel. Now when the graphic novel comes out and it's only like 10 or $15, that's actually, you know, if, if it's good overall, that's not bad. But right now it's just painfully, painfully slow. It's a painfully slow and read. And this is not, kids are not going to read When this. I was reading the, the text blobs where it was more text than art, I, my eyes were just like, I was trying so hard to focus on it and read it. And I'm like, I can't, I just can't stay focused on the word balloons because they're just so much. And I was having trouble keeping my eyes focused on it. And I don't usually have that problem. I read a lot. I don't usually have that problem. But that was some reason, the way the text was, it was really making my eyes go, what? Yeah, it seemed like they had, um, you know, I think Jeremy Whitley had more story than, it just needed to be decompressed a little bit, especially for kids. Like, you look at the uh, look at the Scholastic books, and they're, they're really kind of, it's kind of decompressed storytelling. Like, there was as much dialogue in this 
book is there probably isn't like all of one arena telgemeier's books you know it's like like crammed into one book um and it's all exposition and uh you know show show don't tell so mm -hmm. i don't know just my personal opinion but you know um i'm not writing it so whatever yeah well i don't know I have comments, but I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, uh, it might get better. So far, it's uh, I'd wait for the graphic novel. Yeah. Or take your eight bucks and go buy the DVD. Go set. buy the DVD. Or buy the cute. Go buy yourself a Puppy Bright or that book. No, right? Look at this stuff. Look at this stuff. Look at this amazing, uh, classic Rainbow Look how Bright. Huggable. Go up. Look how huggable Puppy Bright is. Oh, he's so huggable. He looks just like the original. Mostly. He's so huggable. He's so adorable. I love him so. I'm just saying, you could buy, or you can go buy Tickled Pink or one of them for the, you know. The whole series. Team. You can buy the whole. How many minutes is that? It's, there's there not were a like, whole lot of episodes. There was like 16 episodes. Is that many? There's, there were quite a few. Yeah. Oh, there. oh, there's more. There's 18 episodes. No, there's 13. No, they had. Um, no, 1 through 6 and then 7 through 13. Oh, okay, That's how so math works. Episodes. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I thought it was 13. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was 13 episodes. That's right. That's how math works. So they had the uh, yeah they had the mini series uh, the beginning the the beginning of Rainbow uh, uh, Rainbow Land and then they had the movie. No, I want this um, DVD now. So yeah, anyway, it's only, seven, it's only um, 796. There you go. You can uh, you can buy that for the, or you can buy two issues of this. Two or issues you, of it, or you can buy this to tide you over until they actually put a graphic novel out of the other one. Yeah, but if you're looking for, I mean, it's just, just like I mean, it's kind of the same way we feel about Shira, where if you're looking for uh, nostalgia. You're you're not gonna find it here because guess, they've made. I think that you nail, you put the you, you hit the nail on the head. If people are looking for nostalgia and 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 you if you can get it that you still have the same feeling of the original, even if it's somewhat different, people don't care. It's when you go too far away yeah. from it that's unrecognizable. People have an issue. I think if you can keep some of the nostalgia, even if you do make some changes, you do change characters, shapes, or races or whatever. I don't think most people care about that. If you lose the nostalgia feel, that's what they care about. And um, they'll try to spin it as it's an, for other reasons people are upset. But I think it's honestly about the nostalgia feel. And if it's completely unrecognizable, why bother calling it that? Yeah, because you're not going to get the old fans coming back. You're just mm -hmm. going to get you're going to get uh, anger, resentment, <laughs> you know, and right. they're going to take their money and they're just going to go buy the old stuff. Because right. That's that's what they want. So, um, OK, guys, that's uh, I don't have anything else. Nope. Okay, we're we'll done. See if it gets better. We'll see. We'll we'll review the next issue uh, next month. Again, we don't do a lot of comic book reviews, but you know, we might start doing some here and there uh, if it ties into what we usually talk about in the channel. Mm -hmm. So, all right, subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture news, views, and rants, art videos, gaming videos, and more. This has an been '80s stuff. An '80s stuff. <laughs> we're gonna save the '80s. We are gonna save the '80s. Or at least together. we're gonna reminisce about the '80s and have a safe space for the '80s. Sa th that's this it. This is Clown the '80s. Clownfish TV, the '80s safe space. Come to the reef. It's a safe space for the '80s. This is. But we actually used to joke we we're gonna call it the reef. We're gonna call it the reef. Come to the '80s reef. Come to the reef. Come to the reef, guys. Okay. Um. This has been Neon and Geeky. We'll talk Bye. later.